Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're glad to have you with us this year since we were not able to have our Holy Week services last year. We welcome all who are present with us as well as those who are watching us live stream. And today we're having you recorded on the phone, so bear with us. Don't complain about the quality if you're watching it at home because our person who runs our live stream could not be here and we could not get our password to get on our laptop. So <laughs> the moral of this story is we'll know what the password to our laptop is before tomorrow. <laughs> Any other guests are here with us. But as we gather for our worship today, we gather on this Holy Monday and we are grateful for the privilege of meeting together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And as we gather, I invite you to hear with me the words of the psalmist when he writes these words. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Will you pray with me? Holy and righteous God, we gather on this Holy Monday to offer our praise and thanksgiving to the Lamb that was slain for the salvation of the world. During the season of Lent, we've gone from the waters of baptism to the wilderness, from Galilee to Capernaum to Jericho and to Jerusalem. And now we walk with Jesus toward the cross. And even on Monday, we still hear, yet not so loudly, the shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna. With it only being days away, when we will hear the words, crucify him, crucify him. We give you thanks, O oh God, that we can gather as a community of faith with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And as always, we pray these things with humility and thanksgiving in our hearts, in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I wish I could invite you to sing today, but there will be no congregational singing during the week, but you may know the words are printed for you in our worship guide, and we will lead you in that at this time. God, we are so grateful as we gather on this Holy Monday. We are always reminded through the written, spoken Word of God that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and He's the King of Kings. And He is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
making intercession for us all. We realize, oh God, that because of that, your spirit even knows the groanings of our hearts. You know that is all that is upon our hearts and minds this day. And we thank you for the privilege to share the needs of our faith community this morning with each other. And we pray, dear God, that through your grace you will minister to all the needs of each person and each family that has been spoken. For we realize, oh God, in our hearts that you know what those needs are. And you know how to meet those needs best. So we collectively lift them up together in one spirit and ask that your will be done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to sing for you. Uh, it's our closing hymn today, but it's a different arrangement of it.
In another time and place, I always vividly remember how a lady in my congregation sadly would come to me. And she said, you know, Pastor Steve, I come to church every Sunday and I hear that I am a beloved child of God. A person of great value and worth to the Lord. But every evening I go home after church and my husband tells me how pathetic and ugly and worthless I am. And I'm always trying to figure out which of these two voices do I choose to believe. Believe it or not, I think pastors deal with that on a weekly basis. There's always that voice of affirmation, but then there's always that voice that people hear, which is in total opposition to affirmation. It is condemnation. And so we always have to decide which is it that we are going to allow ourselves to primarily hear. Which one are we going to let wrap around our hearts and minds? And today I want to suggest to you that there are two very radically different voices present in our text for today. For it says in the text, it says, when Satan entered into the heart of Judas, which ultimately led to the betrayal of Jesus. A voice that taught, sought to convince Judas that everything that Jesus had taught him and everything that he had experienced from Jesus had been a lie. There's always the voice of God and there's always the voice of Satan. And the truth of the matter is is that when we are tempted like Judas, we too also so often more times than we are willing to admit, we hear those two voices and we are struggling sometimes to decide which one of those voices do we listen to. For we know when any mention of the name Satan is given, especially in the scriptures, we always know immediately this is a spiritual battle. For Paul says in Ephesians 6, 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, it's against the rulers and authorities and powers of this present darkness. It's against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I realize that some of you may even be uncomfortable, and some of you may not, may not even believe in Satan. But I like a line that I trace all the way back to C.S. Lewis in his screw tape letters. And he writes these words. The greatest trick that Satan ever pulled was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. Well, I've never personally encountered Satan in a red suit and a black pitchfork. I will confess to you that I have heard the whisper of his voice. And when I do, he's still peddling the same old lies and lines that he peddled to Judas as well as others. You don't need to trust in God. He's not really the Son of God. He just wants you to believe those things. But believe me instead. And I don't know about you, but I am grateful that I know how the story ends. And I know which voice that we should be listening to. But if you will allow me, I want to direct our attention back to another text. It's also in the Gospel of Luke, where the voice of God is present and the voice of Satan is present. Recorded for us in the fourth chapter of Luke. It says, after Jesus' baptism, he was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. And Jesus had to choose which voice is he going to listen to, which to believe, which to internalize in his heart and mind. 
The first voice Jesus heard was the voice of Satan on the Mount of Temptation. And Satan basically said these words, Jesus, prove your worth. If you're really the Son of God, prove it. Command those stones to turn to bread. Produce. And then Satan said, Jesus, if you're truly the Son of God, prove it. Jump off the top of this temple and razzle-dazzle everybody. And the crowd was the magic act. Prove your identity. Validate your existence. Prove that you are who you are. And finally Satan says to Jesus, if you'll bow down to me, I will give you power and you'll be somebody. The most powerful person in all the world and you'll be worthy. Oh, his voice is always clear. The voice is prove your self-worth. Validate your personhood by what you do. And yet there's another voice in that text in Luke that is present. And Jesus hears that voice. And will you listen in with me to that voice? And it's not a voice that says, Jesus, prove yourself. It's a voice that says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Know with me that when Jesus hears those words, those are words that Jesus hears before he ever begins his public ministry, before he ever performed one miracle, before he ever told one parable, before Jesus had ever preached one sermon, healed one sick person, recruited a single disciple. Jesus had done nothing up to that point, but he hears from the voice of God, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. I don't know what you hear, but when I hear those words spoken to me, what I hear is the voice of the grace of God. The voice of God's unconditional love for my life. And the affirmation says that I don't have to cry and scratch my way and claw my way in order for God to love me. All I have to do is simply accept the grace and love of God through faith as a gift. And when I do, he delights in me being his son. If you're like me, over the years you've watched the Olympics every four years. Well, several years back in the summer there was a woman diver who had been in the previous Olympics and won many medals bronze and silver, and she was a great athlete. This was the year that all the pressure was on her from America to be a gold medal winner. The platform we know is high up in the air, jumping alone from that height, I don't know about you. I don't like jumping off the diving board. <laughs> That's enough stress and pressure for me. I can just jump off on the side of the pool <laughs> but during the Olympics, she's interviewed by a television reporter who asked her, how do you stand the pressure of standing up there knowing that the whole world is expecting you to win a gold medal? She responds back and she says, through the years I have developed a ritual and this is what I do. Every time before I leave off that high board, before my dive, I say these words to myself. If I blow this dive, my mother and father will still love me. Even if I blow this dive, my mother and father still will love me. I don't know about you, but I like that. And I believe that this is the voice that Jesus heard that day in his baptism. You are my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. And in that day in our text, for some reason or another, 
And I don't, we'll never really truly understand. Judas didn't listen to that voice. So my hope and my prayer for all of us on this Holy Monday is, is that when you hear those two radically different voices speaking to you, the voice of Satan that tells you to prove your worth and value, don't listen to those lies. But the voice of God speaks to you and he says that your identity lies in knowing that you are a beloved child of God. And in you, I am well pleased. You don't have to prove your worth to me. You simply have to accept my love through faith as a gift. So when we're tempted, as Judas was in the text, and you listen to the voice of Satan, in our moments of temptation, let us not listen to the voice of evil, but let us listen to the spirit of goodness and grace, the voice of God who says to all of us, you are my beloved son and daughter. In you, I am well pleased. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so grateful that greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. You know, they will appreciate this at the common of church. Some of you may not appreciate this, but whoever cell phone goes off during worship, <laughs> and it could have been one of my members, I don't know, <laughs> but you owe me a gift card, $5 minimum, <laughs> and the only thing that gets you out of that is, is that if your phone has at least a worship tune on it. <laughs> and that one did not. <laughs> Remember, as you exit today, always be respectful of everyone who is here. Also know that if you spread the word around, every day you meet here, our sanctuary is always sanitized completely after you exit. So you're as safe in here as you can be any place you choose to go. We also want to encourage you, as always, we will receive an offering, an offering that goes to the Bowling Green Transient Fund that helps people who are in dire need passing through our town. Over the years during Holy Week, we have collected anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000. You have been gracious, faithful, and generous people. The offering plates are at the back. You don't have to touch it. You can just drop your check or your offering in there as you exit. But before we do, we will sing the first verse of when I survey the wondrous cross.
the communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest upon all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.